Welcome everyone to our second session or rather third session with RoboGals. So RoboGals is a society group at, at Memorial and they have done a scorpion video with us, a solar scorpion robo um, back in March, the last week of March. And then last week we learned about um, decoding ciphers, which was quite a little bit of fun. You can still go back and look at those past two videos. The March one would be in your archives uh, within the clubhouse. Uh, so do check that out versus last week's will be still in your sessions. If you go check those out, especially the cipher, I had a lot of fun just putting up my own codes and the gamification code in the, the uh, jam board. So if you decode the message, you get gamification points. So that's always fun. Um, and with that, though, I think we'll dig right in today so that we can learn how to code HTML websites. Uh, and I'll pass it right over to, to Jane and Hannah of RoboGals. OK, I'm going to share a little presentation that we have with you guys now. Um, can everyone see my screen? I can share this. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> there. And Hannah, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll take it away. So as you already know, we are from the MUN chapter of RoboGals, and today we're going to be doing a website coding workshop with you guys. Do you want to go to the next slide, Jane? Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're just going to really briefly talk about who we are and what we do, but you've already kind of seen this presentation a couple of times, so we'll try to keep it short for you guys. Um, so RoboGals is a global organization, and we are from the MUN chapter, which is led by, it's a student-led organization from students from all different STEM backgrounds. So oh, there's a lot of engineering uh, majors. We also have some mathematics, pharmacy, all kinds. And we lead a bunch of different workshops and events that are encouraging young women and gender diverse youth to pursue careers in STEM. So here are some pictures from uh, our summer STEM fair, a Halloween event we did, and some of the coding and STEM workshops we've done for schools. Um, so now we're just going to introduce herself. I'll let Jane go first here. Yeah, so my name is Jane and my pronouns are she, her, and I am a computer engineering student. Um, I'm currently in school, but over the summer I will be doing a work term and I'm going to be joining Valet in Boise Bay, Labrador as an operational excellence student. Um, when I graduate, I plan to work in biomedical software engineering. Um, that's what I've done previously in other work terms, and I really loved it. And one of my favorite parts about engineering is that I get to take on exciting projects that challenge me every single day. And I'll go over some pictures. <laughs> There's just me and my puppy, which I always like to include a picture of her. And then the um, picture where it says, welcome to easy health. That's actually a HTML project that I done this semester as one of my big course projects. Um, it is a website where doctors and patients can log in and book appointments and do lots of different things. Yeah, so my name is Hannah, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm also in computer engineering. I am in the biomedical stream and I'm actually graduating this term. Uh, and I plan to pursue a career in STEM education after this. Um, so my favorite part about engineering is definitely the endless possibilities. Uh, we'll kind of discuss it in a second, but there's so many different ways that you can use coding and the different things you'll learn from uh, the computer engineering program. There's just, you can make so many different things, a couple of which are here on this screen. So in that top box, the one that says is a hot dog, a sandwich, that is actually a screenshot from my capstone design project which if you go into engineering, you will also get to do. It's a big project and it's a lot of fun. Um, and so my group made a social media platform that you play games with strangers on basically. Um, I've also been a part of on my last work term over on the right side in the red box. That is the screen cap to the opening page of a mobile health application that I was a part of. <laughs> and then on the bottom, 
as ridiculous as it looks, it's called Emu Evolution. That was a game I made back in term four. So you can go in a lot of different directions with this and have a lot of fun with it. Um, so we're just gonna really briefly talk about some possible careers in specifically computer engineering. So it's a really broad profession, like I just said, and there's a lot of different career paths you can take. You can go to software development, network engineering, cybersecurity, data analysis, and more. And because it's so versatile, pursuing, pursuing a career in computer engineering really opens up a lot of opportunities to work in a variety of uh, different industries, uh, tech development, biomedical, uh, telecommunications, and many more. <laughs> Oh yeah, and some pictures. I forgot we kept this slide, but just as a broad idea of what you can do in engineering, aside from computer engineering, of course, we have a little software developer up there in the top right corner, but there's also robotics, which also needs a lot of computer engineering, um, but you could go into uh, design, construction, oil and gas. The possibilities are really endless. And so I'll probably take over now and we'll move into the part of building a website. So first we're gonna talk about what HTML actually is. And so HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and it's a coding language that's used to create the user interface of a website. So it consists of a series of elements that we'll call tags. You'll probably hear me say tag a lot through this presentation. Um, and as you can see there, there's a little um, picture of a simple HTML file, and you'll actually see this when you first open up the website you are going to make. So some common HTML tags are here in this table. So we have the H1 tag, which creates a header, um, the P tag, which creates a paragraph, and we're actually gonna use all these, so I'll go into them like a bit more in depth later. And we have the image tag, um, and the SRC equals there is where you would put a um, URL to an image. So it would paste an image onto the website. We have the center tag, which would center the text of the image. And we have the list tag. So the UL actually stands for unordered list and there are such things as ordered list too. So it would matter with the order. And I think that's everything there. Okay. so. For the people who are joining um, remotely, I might ask a few um, questions. And if you are watching the recording, um, everybody can just go in and follow this link now and you can see the picture below. Um, and that's the simple HTML file that I mentioned earlier. So I'll give everyone a minute to get to this website. Just give me a moment. I'll uh, make sure it's in the chat, both within uh, Zoom here, there, now, but I'll also be putting it in the clubhouse yep. um, so that anyone watching asynchronously after the fact will be able to, to just click and go. Um, yeah, perfect. Um, All right, I've got the link now in Zoom and just putting it into the clubhouse there now for anyone who is uh, is joining us. Thanks so much. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next slide now. Hopefully everybody was able to get onto the website. And so first we are going to change the heading or the paragraph on your website. And so, as I mentioned before, the H1 tag is going to be the header and the P tag is going to be the paragraph. So if you change the text that's in between either of those tags and then hit run on the website, it will actually change 
um, what shows up on the other side, which is your little website that we're calling it. So you can go ahead now and change the text to whatever you want it. I put, hello, my name is Jane Kinden because I'm gonna make a little website about myself. Um, and then if you click the little green run button, um, it should change on the other side. So I'll give everybody a minute to try it. And I'm, I'll keep an eye on the chat while I'm doing this as well. If anybody has any questions who are joining um, today and not watching recording. I'll just jump in again for a moment just to uh, encourage the students. This will be part of your gamification points today. So um, once you're once we get through this and, and presumably there'll be quite a quite a few edits that we'll make to this page as we go, uh, just you'll you can just take a screenshot and send it along to stemforgirls at wrdc.ca. If there's not another way of doing that, I'm not sure what what the end point is here because I'm learning too, um, but, but definitely follow along and, and code your own website here because there'll be gamification points. Okay, and usually I tend to ask a lot if you guys have it changed and if it worked, but I know not everybody is comfortable um, answering questions and a lot of you are probably watching this as a recording. So um, if you aren't joining, if you are joining right now, um, you can feel free to tell me to slow down if I'm going too fast. Um, but if not, I'm gonna head on to the next slide. Oh, thank you for saying it worked for you. <laughs> okay, and now we are gonna change the color of the font. So this actually has to do with inside of the tags instead of in between them. So um, we want to add style equals color and then whatever color you want. So I have another link there. I don't know, I could probably put it in the chat. Um, and that's the list of all the different color names that you can use in HTML. I'll type it in the chat very quickly. And so you should be able to follow that in the chat that I just put there then. Um, and it'll give you a list of all the different colors that you can um, use. And you can see in the picture there, I actually have that line that I said to add in between the first H1 tag. So it's in between the little triangles on either, either side of it. And so that's just telling it to only change the font color of the header. So you could also put this in the paragraph tag and, um, you could maybe name, make your paragraph a different color. Um, and yeah. So I'll give everybody a minute to try that as well. And you guys can let me know in the chat if you want to, um, if it worked for you, if you have any issues at all with it, you can let me know. Great, I can see some people in the chat saying that they've got it, that's amazing. So I'll probably, since some people have it, I'll probably move on to the next slide. Um, so we're not waiting around too long. So this one's pretty similar to what we just did, um, but we're gonna change the background color of your website again. So you probably want to go back to that link that I just posted in the chat and um, you can look at what color you want your background to be. So it's the same, sort of the same thing. You wanna add style equals, but instead of just color, you wanna add background color. So I chose 
I put pink in the slides, but down in the actual picture, I chose light pink for mine. And so you want to put it in the body tag because the body tag refers to the like whole website. And I'll give you a minute to all choose what color you want to do and try it out and run it. Okay, I can see someone said that it changed the paragraph color and not the page. So that probably happened um, because you didn't put it in the correct spot. So um, did you put it in the body tag or did you put it in the paragraph tag? The body tag, that is really weird. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why that would happen to be honest with you. Hannah, do you know why that would happen? <laughs> My only guess would be if the uh, the closing uh, mark on the tag got erased so it's oh, not in the true. correct section anymore maybe? Yeah, so um, did you accidentally erase the little triangle that's at the end of, you can see, I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse, but if you can, I'm hovering over it. It's right after it says light pink. Did that get erased by any chance? I'm not sure how to fix that for you, honestly. Perhaps you could, um the student could copy and paste your, yeah, they just did um, their, their okay. code into the chat. Okay, I'm gonna send you back something and you can try out this instead. Cause I think the issue is that you didn't put the background before color. Yeah, it's a lot of attention to detail with coding, which is yeah. a, a super thing to, to honestly, when you put coding on a resume, um, that you're able to do that and you're fluent in it, you're saying that you have great attention to detail or likewise in an interview, if you're trying to say that you have great attention to detail as one of your personality characteristics, how do you prove that? Well, I'm fluent in HTML coding. Um, yeah. So little back and forth there. Yeah, with pretty much every coding language, there are just little tiny things that if you miss, um, it can mess up the whole page. <laughs> oh, it's working now, that's great. Okay, well, we will probably move. Someone else said it did the same for me too. I put some, I had to put something back as I took out something that I wasn't supposed to take out. So that's, and just another thing, like a lot of times we accidentally move things and it can mess up everything. It happens all the time in coding. So um, hopefully everybody's is working now and we'll move on to the next slide. I also realized that I didn't put any of my actual, what the actual, my actual website looks like, but in a couple slides from now, you will see my website as well. Okay, and now we're gonna try an image. And there is what my website is looking like now. I put in um, a picture of some carrot cake muffins because when I made this presentation, I had just made some carrot cake muffins. <laughs> so 
So how we're going to add an image um, is you're going to want to go to Google and find a picture of whatever image that you would like to put into your website. And you're going to want to right click on the image and click copy image address. And it's very important that you follow those steps that you right click on the image and click copy image address and not take the link from the top. Because if you take the link that's in like the search bar, um, the image won't display properly. And so then once you have found the image and copied the address, you want to um, add your link to an image tag like I mentioned earlier. So it'll be this line right here, image or IMG SRC equals, and then you can paste that link that you got from the image right there. And then I also added width and height because sometimes the image that you find in Google is way too big for your website. So I changed my width to 200 and my height to 300. Um, and then that made it so it was the perfect size to fit on my website. So you can all try that now. And I think right here is where um, it actually is in the code. So you just wanna put it similar to this one in the picture. And I'm going to pause a little bit longer than I have for the other one, because um, this one tends to take a lot longer. And a lot of people tend to have issues with this one. So if you guys have any issues at all, let me know. And I will keep an eye on the chat again. There's a question in the chat there. When you write the code, does it already add a space for you or do you add it in yourself? So which space are you talking about? Because I'm assuming, do you mean in between the, the pictures and the words? So um, if you want to, make a bigger space you can add a line break tag which you just would put this i'll type it in the chat for you you would put that in after the end of your um, paragraph tag so after this one right here i'm pointing to with my mouse if you guys can see that so you would put it like right here somewhere and that would make a bigger space but um the space that i have there in between the text and the picture is actually just the one that the code made I'm just doing this along with with everyone so that I can understand as well. <laughs> it's been a while, but just uh, I just wanted to just say when I first put in my my image, it was all like squish ways because I put in your exact width and yeah. height. I just need need... height, and then it was fine. Yeah, depending on like the ratio of your image, for the width, the height, when it's in Google, you probably will have to change it. I think if you actually look at my code there, I changed mine to um, the height 300 and width 230. Um, so you can just change those values around until your picture doesn't look wonky anymore as well. Yeah, it seems to be when I put just the width in, it seemed to auto-regulate for the height, like it kept the proportions just from the original website. Yeah. Always fun to just play with code too. I didn't know that would work, but the <laughs> thing with this is I click run and I find out, does, did that work? That is how I learned pretty much all of HTML. I wasn't taught any of it in any of my courses in school so far, but like I just said in my introductory so slide, I just did a full project in HTML and most of it was just playing around and seeing what showed up when I changed things. <laughs> Thank you. 
Did anyone have any issues with their image so far who's um, joining live? Okay, someone said it's not working for me. Um, could you explain here? I could, I can see your issue already. So um, the person in the chat just um, pasted what they were putting in there. So you have just a very little typo. So instead of image SRC, you have image ARC. So if you change that A to an S, it should work for you. You can let me know if changing that works. Last time I done this workshop, a few people had issues where the it's a bit small on the slot. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, and as I was saying, last time I done this, a few people had issues when they put their images in. Um, they didn't actually show up. It was just like a little thing that um, just like a little gray block. So if Anybody who is watching this as a recording, if that happens, um, I would suggest um, trying a different image. And then again, I can't stress enough that you go and right click on the image and click copy image address. And because I think what happened last time is most people were taking the image address from the search bar. And that's awesome that it worked for you now. For the um, issue of just the screen size, uh, just to note if any of the students are in the clubhouse, meaning you can still see like the navigation bar and everything, that big purple navigation bar. Um, within your within the video window that we're in here on the top right corner, there's a button there uh, for full screen. So while, I mean, the words are still, you know, the size that they are, uh, that, that will help if, if you're just in the clubhouse um, to at least make the video the, the full size of your screen. Okay, and I don't see any more issues in the chat, so we'll probably move on to the next slide. I keep doing that. Okay, so here we have a list like I um, mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to go back to the other slide to show you what um, my website's talking about and why I included a list. Actually, I can't go back apparently right now, um, but in my website, I was talking about how I love to bake because that's one of the many things that I really enjoy doing. Um, and so in my paragraph, I included some of the things I like to bake are, and then I wanted to list some of the things that I like to bake. Um, so this one includes two different kinds of tags. So I have the UL tag, which I mentioned before is the unordered list. And then the LI tag. So the LI tag just makes the actual um, thing that you're going to list there. So you first want to put in um, the UL and then the ending tag for the UL, which is this one right here, if you can see my mouse, hopefully. Um, and then you can put the little list tags or elements um, inside of the unordered list. And it should look something like mine, except you can put whatever you want in your list. Also, I want to mention here that um, you can see that the font of mine is black because that's the default in HTML if you don't specify. So we changed the font of the header and the paragraph earlier. So if you wanted to change the font of this, you could also add the um, little style that we added in the header inside of either of these tags. If you do it in the UL tag, it'll apply to the whole list. But if you wanted to change the font of just the first um, list element, you could just put it in the first LI element.
well, students are working on that and we're giving them a chance. I think I'll pop up the, the gamification code um, for watching the video and or being here live. So our gamification code is white hat. So a white hat or a white hat hacker is a ethical security hacker. Um, and this is a job title uh, within cybersecurity. So cybersecurity is, is the theme of the month that we're currently doing. Um, and yeah, ethical hacking is a term meant to imply a broader category than just penetration testing, which is another um, term within the cybersecurity world. And an ethical hacker is always on the lookout for flaws in a company's network and works to strengthen them. Um, so you might actually be hired to be a hacker in the cybersecurity uh, career field. And you would be called a white hat. That's your gamification code. One of them, you'll get another for doing your, your website and sending it to a screenshot um, to stemforgirls at wrdc.ca, or you can also post it uh, direct to the uh, feed loop event feed there in the main lobby. And you do that through using the feed loop go app. That's how um, students can, can post their own photos there. But if you do email, I can also uh, post it myself through that function. Could you go, someone just asked, could I go back to the image part of the website? And I think I can for some reason. Okay, there we go. And I will leave that up until you are ready for me to change it. So you can just let me know. And if you're having any issues with it, um, you can ask a question. And I will go back to the list slide again and stay there for a while as well. For anyone who's already kind of done their image and their list, uh, maybe pop into the chat if you've ever done HTML before. I'd be curious if this is something that's new for you um, and or if you've, you know, been at this six years already. <laughs> that's something I would be interesting, interested to know as well. Um, I never did HTML until I was in university, but I wish that, that I did it do it while I was in high school. One, one student saying that it's uh, their first time. Used to be all the rage when I was in high school, a good like decade plus ago. <laughs> that you would code your own websites I goodness you would make it like snow it was it was ridiculous quite honestly but um we did used to play with this a long time ago I feel like this is one of the older coding or popular coding I'm sure there was tons of coding around in fact um oh what's that movie There's a movie about NASA scientists on um, Netflix and the, the women in it are called computers and they are like, just as coding is really coming out, they are the original computers. It was their job title back in 50s, 60s. And I'm skipping on the, the it's movie. It's called Hidden Figures. And it's, if anyone hasn't seen it, it's extremely interesting. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> Same. Um, I'm just going to address a question in the chat. So if someone said, I think this is wrong, and then included um, their image tag. And so I can um, 
the link is very long, but it's fine um, if that's the image that you want to use. But at the end of the tag, you're supposed to close it with um, the, the little triangles. Um, I would call it a greater than sign. Um, but if you see right down at the end of the link where the end of the body tag is, there should be the closing arrow. I can probably paste it into the chat and correct it for you if you want. It looks to me that that it's actually the the body in HTML should be after the height. Yes. Oh, yes. The, the body tag has been moved up too far. So the width and height need to be moved up yes. to just after the end of the URL. And then the body and HTML tag should be underneath it. Yes. Just as an example, I just put in my little code. It's just, the image is just the STEM for Girls logo. Um, and that just goes after after my list. So I do have the, the and I, I imagine you can put your image before or after, but yeah. how mine looks is my header, STEM for Girls. I've got a little paragraph, a list of bullet points, and then I have the image at the bottom. Um, and yeah. then it ends in that body HTML. Um, would it be all right if I moved back to the list slide again for anybody who um, didn't get to do that? Okay. Oh, that's no, don't feel sorry about that. Um, someone in the chat said sorry for going back to the other slide, but that's perfectly fine. <laughs> The website that we're using is really cool. I haven't actually dug into it before, though I have um, 
it's been recommended before um, the W3 schools. They have a lot of the coding languages on there. So if anyone is interested in learning Python or, or any other type of coding, um, W3 schools actually has a, a, a lot of options for that. Yeah, W3 schools I find is amazing because especially for HTML because they list pretty much everything that you could possibly do um, on an HTML page because what we're doing here is just like a very simple um, version of a website, whereas like there are lots more things you can do. So if anybody is really enjoying this or um, wants to keep going, um, W3 schools list every HTML tag and everything that you could possibly do with it. And um, we can also, you can also do the other coding languages and it provides the um, interface to actually try and run it, which is amazing. Is there, someone said, is there a way to change the font? And there is, I don't actually have it um, in this slideshow, um, but you can, there is a list of different font names that you can use on the W3Schools website. Um, I don't have the link to it right now. Um, and I can't get it because I'm sharing my screen. I don't know if Hannah, if you would be able to find it and put it in the chat maybe. Um, but it would be similar to how you did um, changing the color of it, um, but you would just put in font instead of color there and you would put in the font name. So it would, I can probably type in the chat what it would look like. So I'll just show you like a simple um, changing the font of a paragraph in the chat. And I think the website that um, Hannah just linked to in the chat um, will actually show you how to do it as well. But I will just send it for you anyway, so you could probably um, copy and paste it if you wanted to. Yeah, in the link I just sent, it has like a list of the fonts and then there's a try it yourself button. So if you hit that button, it'll open a new page and show you the actual code you need. And I'm just gonna send a little paragraph tag into the chat if you wanted to try that as well. And that'll change the font to Verdana, which I'm not even sure what that looks like. <laughs> Also, a little note, if you're trying to add multiple styles to one tag, so say yes. you want to add this to something you already put a color on, to do that, you'll have to add a semicolon after your first style and then add the other. I'll, I'll send an example because it's not going to yes. make a lot of sense. <laughs> I was um, just about to say, I could type in an example of that as well. I'll just, I got one here. I'll copy and paste it. But yeah, you, there's a certain way you have to do it. So yeah, what I just sent in the chat there, that's how you have to do it. You put, you do style equals, and then you start your quotation marks, and then you put your first one, semicolon, second one, and then you close the quotation marks. Um, and that's another thing in Hannah's example there in the chat, that's another thing that you can do is you can change the font size as well. It's something I didn't include in the presentation either. Um, <laughs> but you I didn't even change... realize that was font size that I had in that tag and not style. <laughs> it's fine. It's the same principle. But yeah, if you wanted to change the font size as well, you can um, change it. So 20 PX would make it bigger than what you have on the screen right now. And I'm going to go on to the next slide. Um, I can't, someone says I can't see what you sent. Oh, I think. 
If they're in Oh, the... I only sent it to hosts and panelists. I, I will resend the link I did to as the well. website <laughs> and okay. <laughs> Okay, I think you guys should be able to see um, our messages now in the chat. And like I was just about to mention, I am gonna go on to the next slide because I don't think we have much time left and I still have two slides that I would like to cover. Um, but if you have any questions about list, feel free to put them in the chat. This will go up as a recording. So even if you're a little behind, um, I'll in fact try to get this up right away so that you can continue to work on your uh, videos tonight if you, or not videos, but websites tonight if you so choose. Um, and then you can pause where you need to. And so this slide is just some little style changes that you can make to your website. And um, the first one is a border. So I added a six pixel dotted border to the style in the body header. So this is sort of what Hannah was just mentioning and what she put in the chat. So we already have our background color here. So I added a semicolon and then typed in border and put in how big I wanted it, the style and the color. So you guys can also add that there. I hope it's big enough that you can see it where it says border um, six pixel dotted into the style tag in the body tag. And then I also have on this slide that you can center things. So if you wanted to center, say, your image, you would put um, that inside of the um, actual center tag. So I will send what I mean in the chat because I'm not sure if that's quite clear enough. And I will do it for a paragraph again. So what I just sent to the chat there would actually center the word hello in the middle of the website. So you would, whatever you want to center, you have to put in between the two center tags. I think in my website, I centered my um, paragraph and my image and my header. And I have one last thing to show you guys after this, and it's probably one of my favorites to do on a website. So um, if everybody's ready who's joining live, I can um, move on. If not, you can let me know in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next slide. Um, if anybody wants, just let me know and I can bring it back to this one. So like I said, this is probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, and that's just add emojis because everyone loves emojis. Um, 
I will put this link in the chat as well. So you can just click on it and go. And But that's going to tell you what you have to type in for each emoji. And there's the link that you can follow in the chat. So when you go to that link, there's going to be like a big list of different emojis. And then there's going to be two numbers next to them. And one corresponds to a hexadecimal number and one corresponds to a decimal number. So the numbers that we're used to are just plain decimal numbers. Um, so that's what you can use. I think it's the second in the list, but I'm not 100% sure now. Um, but it should say at the top which one's which. And then anywhere that you have text already, you can just type the ampersand or what would you probably you'd probably call an and sign and a number sign. And then you would you could paste in the corresponding reference number to the emoji you want to use. So you can see right here that I put in my header tag just a big smiley emoji. Um, and so I put in the and sign, the number sign, and then the number corresponding to that smiley emoji right there is 128512. And that's how you would put it into any of the website. You could put them in your paragraph anywhere you want to. And I'll give you guys a minute or so to find an emoji you want to use because there are so many there. Um, and you guys can let me know if you are having any issues. Someone just asked, when I center my list, the bullet points are still on the far left. How can I fix this? Um, so it actually, I'm not exactly sure why that would happen. So it could be because you don't have the entire list in the center tag. You just have the um, LI elements. Do you have the center tags around um, the UL or just the um, LI by any chance? Both, okay. I'm actually gonna try it out myself and I will let you know. Just give me one second to try it. Oh, I can see someone saying it works. I think that's probably for the emoji, which is great. I just tested out the uh, the center issue and I found a way to fix it. So <laughs> um, I'm going to send in the chat. So if you add the list style position inside that I just put in the chat, put that into the UL line, the top tag. I should have just sent the whole the whole thing is probably more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the opening tag, the first tag of your UL. It, you put this in the styling for that. So this is what mine looks like for the, the first UL tag. That list style position inside should, should fix it and make the bullet points move over with it. 
Perfect. And I think we are almost out of time. So I'm going to um, just go to our last slide. And I want to thank you all for your participation, whether you're doing this live or watching the recording. Um, and I hope you guys learned something new today. Um, this has been awesome. Thank you both so much for spending the past hour with us. Um, and I hope the students had as much fun as I did. I'm going to quickly, and, and yes, for anyone who um, hasn't tuned in before, then the RoboGals, there's two other videos uh, from RoboGals, but these are their links to follow them on their various social media. And if you are happen to be in grade 12 looking at a memorial in the autumn, then check them out as a society group. I just highly recommend joining society groups uh, full stop, but RoboGals seems like a, a great place to uh, end up. Um, but I, I thought I would just ever so quickly share what I've been doing. It's just ever so simple, but uh, just to show you, this is where I've ended up. Can you see that? I think so. Yeah. 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 So here we are, Stanford Girls, and we're some things that we're covering in, in the upcoming months. We've got biochem in May, electricity in June, uh, and geology and aerodynamics are probably the autumn. But in between then and now, we do have Summer Summit. Um, so a lot of good things always coming up, but I just thought I'd, I'd show what I just worked on the past hour. And I'm really looking forward to all of the, the students' videos, or I keep saying videos, but um, screenshots. So if anyone's not aware, there's usually a button on your keyboard that says screenshot, and then you can paste that into like paint, uh, save it and send it to uh, STEM for girls at wrdc.ca. And with that, we're we're out of time today, but we are back on next Tuesday. So um, just flag it in your minds. Next week is your your spring break, um, or most most students' spring break, I suppose. I'm not sure if there's anyone with any different week off, but uh, we'll be we'll be doing a e-learning course with ICTC again on cybersecurity. Um, and that'll be something that you can work on throughout the week as well. So uh, tune in on next Tuesday, but certainly even if you can't tune in on Tuesday, um, there'll be some activities for you to do throughout the week on that one. And you can continue obviously to work on your HTML skills um, as well and, and show us your creations. I, I'm excited to see with, with what you come up with. Um, Thank you so much, both of you, um, and have a great Monday, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.